Okay, number 32 says 20% of what number is 80? Here's another percent problem. 20% means 20 per 100, so 20 out of 100. Of means multiply what number, we don't know what the number is, so we call it a variable. Is, is equals, um, is 80. Now, if we want to stay consistent, I can make 80 also into a fraction. All right, rewriting this, we're going to have, um, I guess if we kind of stuck the variable to the fraction, it would look like this. And, you know, this is um, more like what you've seen this year with me. Uh, so we touch the variable to the fraction, and that is equal to, oh, sorry, 80 over 1. Now, how do you get rid of a fraction when it's touching a variable? Uh, our rule is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that fraction. So we have 100 over 20, and we must do the same thing to the other side. And that is going to be 100 over 20. Do your cancellations. So these are going to all cancel out. And you're left with x equaling. All right, so let's cancel here. 1 and 4, 4 times 100 is 400, 400 divided by 1 is still 400. So it, let's answer the question, 20% of what number is 80? 20% of 400 is equal to 80, so x is 400. Number 33. I weighed 160 pounds at the start of college. I weighed 180 pounds at the end of college. So we see an increase there of 20 pounds. What was the percent increase in weight? So I used the formula, the percent formula, um, percent of increase formula, sorry. So we're gonna find the difference between what we started with and where we are now. So we have 180 uh, subtracted by 160. We're gonna take that and divided by what we began with, we began at 160 pounds. So we're going to have uh, 20 over 160. Let's reduce that down, make our life a little easier. We can cancel out the zeros. So we're left uh, with 2 sixteenths. Let's make our life a little easier. Let's reduce that 1 eighth. Now we need to know what that is as a percentage. So we have 1 divided by 8. We'll go do that with uh, our pencil here. So 1 divided by 8. 8 goes into 1 0 times. Add a decimal, bring it up. Add a 0, bring it down. 8 goes into 10 1 time. 1 times 8. 2, bring it down. 8 goes in 2 times. 2 times 8 is 16, we're left with 4, bring it down, 8 goes into 45 times, 5 times 8 is 40, a remainder of 0, and I need this as a percentage, so uh, let's take that 125 thousandths, multiply it by 100, move it the decimal 2 times to the right, you should be at 12.5%. Next one, we're looking for average. So if I'm taking the average of the weight of these uh, fish that we caught, I'm going to add up all of the pounds and divide it by the number of inputs that we had. So I had an input of 2, 4, 9, 11, and 12. Finding the average. We're going to find the mean here. We're going to add them all up and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4. We had five different inputs. Now let's see here. We have 12. We have 23. We have 32. We have 36. 38 fifths. And what do they want? They want that as um, the average weight. So 38 fifths uh, pounds of fish. And if you wanted to turn it into a mixed number, we could go, what, seven and three-fifths pounds. Okay, next one says, find the area of a triangle with these given coordinates. 
All right, so the first coordinate I have is uh, labeled as the origin of 0, 0, and that would be right here. I have uh, 0, 5, so 0 on the x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are two vertices of my triangle. My third vertex is going to be at 7, 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3. All right. I can draw my triangle. Let me get a quick line out here for you. All right. And they would like us to find the area. So I know that there's two different ways I could write it. One half BH or BH divided by two. Let's just go with one that you're probably most familiar with. All right, so I have the area going to be one half multiplied by the base. Well, the base of the triangle is what it sits on, and the base, how many units? Let's count them out. We have one, two, three, four, five different units there. And then the height of the triangle, we never measure height on an angle, so we're going to have to um, basically stand the triangle straight up and find the height, which would be from the highest point down to the base. And we'll count out those units as being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 7 units for the height. And now we're just going to calculate. 1 half. 5 times 7 is 35. And uh, the area can be noted as a half of 35 or 35 over 2. We don't know what the unit is. We'll call it units. Area is always to the second dimension or second power. Right, number 36. Now we're going to find the area of a square. So we know the formula. Side times side. All right, let's figure out what our uh, points of location are. So we go 2, negative 1, 1, 2, negative 1. We don't know B. We don't know C. We do know D is 2, 7. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so knowing that it's a square, I have one side length. Let's count out the units of that side length. So we go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have a square that is 8 by 8. So let's put in our other uh, points of interest. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then down here. All right, so I need to know what point C is. Uh, let's call this C. And that ordered pair is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So uh, point C will be 10, 7, and point B, I'll put point B down here. The other unknown is going to be at 10 and, uh, what do we got, 0. We didn't go anywhere. All right, so if I'm finding the area, I know that this is a... Oh, wait a second. Whoa, 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 wait a second. I didn't go far enough down. My fault. This is a square. I need to come down here to this other point of interest. That is not correct there. Sorry about that. All right, so let's come on down here. The next point is going to be eight units down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry. All right, so that's point B. And that is at 10, negative 1. Glad I caught that. All right. Now, it says, uh, let's find the area of this particular square. We know that it's uh, one side length is 8. So if I plug that in, I have the area being 8 squared. So we have 64. We don't know the unit, so we'll call it U in the second dimension for area. All right, moving right along, uh, we are at number 37 now. What do they have for us? Area of a trapezoid. All right, so the formula for the area of a trapezoid, it looks like they didn't give it to you. I'll write it out here. So the formula is a half 
multiplied by the sum of the top and the bottom of your trapezoid multiplied by the height. All right, so let's just plug in what we have. We have the area equaling one half. The sum of B1 and B2, <clears throat> they give us 10 and four, so the uh, sum of that we know is 14 multiplied by the height, which is five. And these are just basically plug-in numbers and solve. So we have 14 and 5. I'm just going to do this the simple way. Uh, looks like I can go left to right. A half of 14 is 7 multiplied by 5. So the area is equal to 35. What are we talking about? What units? We have centimeters. So the unit is centimeters. And we are doing area, so we are in the power of 2 for that unit. Two dimensions. All right, if you want to, if you were ever given a picture of a trapezoid, let me do that real quick for you. Uh, let's see, do I have any in here? I think I'd have to make one. I'm just going to freehand one real quick for you. So if you have a trapezoid, they could be written in different ways. All right, so we have... There's one way of drawing a trapezoid. Uh, another one, you could have a flat edge. And when you're determining the B1 and the B2 in these pictures, that's the top and the bottom, um, they need to be the lines that are parallel to each other. And I'm noticing right here, this could be B1, and this could be B2, and then here's your height. Uh, B1 and B2 are interchangeable because it's a sum, so uh, it wouldn't matter what order that's in. And then looking at this trapezoid on the bottom, uh, again, the B1 and B2 are going to be your uh, parallel lines. So these two are not parallel, so uh, we have what? B1, B2, and then you have the height of this. So you could take this height right here, or you could draw in your height. If, it doesn't matter. They're both the same length there. Okay, number 38 it says find the exact area of a circle with the given diameter and no formula given, so I'll give that to you. It's A is equal to pi times the radius squared. And let's plug in our given information. Uh, so area is equal to, they want pi in the answer, so we're not going to change that to 3.14. Uh, we're not going to use the calculator button, so let's keep it in there. Pi multiplied by the radius. Well, if they give us the diameter of the circle, that's all the way straight across. So the radius is just this halfway point. So if the diameter is 10 and I want the radius, let's change the color there, the radius is going to be a half of that, so that's 5. All right, so we're going to do what to that radius? We're going to square it. And let's continue. So A is equal to pi multiplied by 25. And, you know, just using it... Um, you know, a little cleaner look. Let's put the 25 first. So 25 pi, what's our unit? They give us the unit of centimeters. We're finding area, so we're in the second dimension. Final answer. All right, number 39, find the exact circumference, uh, circumference of a circle. The given uh, formula is C is equal to 2 pi r. So it looks like they want you to have these formulas memorized, these basic formulas. And um, they want pi in the answer again. So uh, let's go. Let's plug in what we know. So the circumference is equal to 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius, which is 3 fourths. So it looks like I want to turn all of these into fractions. That'll, that'll be a little easier for us. So C is equal to 2 over 1 multiplied by pi over 1 multiplied by 3 fourths. Let's go straight across. 2 times 3 is 6 times pi is 6 pi. 1 times 1 times 4 is 4. And I have a um, reducible fraction. And I see that 2 goes into both of them, so we have 3 over 2, 
and our remaining pi. What's our unit of measurement? Centimeters, area to the second power. Final, simplified answer. All right, now we have the volume of a sphere. Okay, so they give us that formula. Four thirds, uh, what do we have? Pi r cubed. Okay, volume is in three dimensions here. And let's plug in what we know. V is equal to the fraction of 4 thirds multiplied by pi over 1 multiplied by the radius. Well, they give us the actual radius this time. So we're going to take 2 to the third power. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 over 1. And let's multiply. 4 times 8 is 32 times pi over 3, and uh, no way to simplify that, so let's put in a unit. In dealing with volume, we are now in the third dimension. Final answer, it's exact. Okay, last one. Uh, let me slide all this over here for you. Number 41, these are basic um, conversions that you should know, and you're going to use these conversions for the next page, actually. And uh, let me just write that in for you if you don't know. We have one foot being 12 inches, um, one meter is going to be equaling 100 centimeters, one yard we know is three feet. One centimeter is 10 millimeters. This sounds like a lot of science stuff you may have learned in there, huh? All right, so now mileage. One mile is 5,280 feet. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. And then the last one, one inch, is 2 and 54 hundredths centimeters. All right, so we're going to use those conversions. Um, in the next part. So if you have any questions, uh, bring those questions to me in class.